We have a growing library of reference guides on Coding for Entrepreneurs as GitHub. Uh, so Coding for Entrepreneurs slash guides with GitHub. And um, in here, we'll see that there's one called Using South and Django. So this just covers what we did in the last one. So we install South, we added to installed apps, all that stuff. Um, this is a guide that will allow you to do that or help you through that and what you should kind of see and and how it should how it should work when you're doing it. Um, and this guide will be updated and it's just gonna be one spot versus having it where we did have it, which was in our code. So I just moved it onto GitHub so we can reference that at any time. Uh, if you have any questions or suggestions on things that should be added here, of course, let me know. Um, so now that we have that out of the way, we set up this IP address. So we actually need to save the IP address um, for wherever it is. So we need to get the IP address from a user when they actually go somewhere. And then we need to do something with that IP address. Well, I'm gonna save it into our join app. So let's actually go ahead and look in our views and we're gonna put it in here. But the first thing I wanna do is actually print out at home. So I'll print out the request. So I wanna see what the request is. So things that are coming with them visiting home. Okay, so if I make sure I'm running the server, so python, python manage.py run server, and jumping back into the project on the home page. Now, if we refresh a few times, uh, we should see that we have uh, we have cookies, we have all this stuff coming through, and then there's also going to be a HTTPX forwarded for possibly. So there's a few different ways on how we can actually get the IP address. Uh, and then there's also a remote address. So remote address is one of them. And then there's another one called X uh, forward four and that either one, we want to grab it if it's there. Um, so in this case, it just has remote address. And uh, I also noticed that we have the IP address showing up here. So we'll fix that in just a moment too. Um, and then what we'll do now is in our views, I'm going to actually print out the meta information and then get remote address. So what we see the meta information, if you look uh, through the code, it will actually show you that if I scroll up a little bit, it says meta right here. And then we just go to getting um, the request, uh, the remote address. All right, so this is that's what that's gonna do. So if we save it and run a refresh again, it will give us this address, which is not technically the IP address of our computer that we are on right now, uh, but it's what's coming through because of the server and how the server's set up, right? So that's how it's coming through. Now, the server we're gonna end up using will allow us to actually get their IP address, which is Heroku, uh, but in this case, it's not allowing us to do it uh, because of how our Django server is currently set up. So that's something to keep in mind. And then there is one other option of getting the address is using x forwarded for. So if we did print request dot meta dot get, and that's HTTP x underscore x underscore forwarded for. We refresh in here, and it's not actually printing anything because there's not there's no value for it, right? So it doesn't actually have a value. Uh, so those are the two ways to actually get the IP address. Now, if this is here, then we're gonna go to that one. Uh, if it's not, then we'll just use the remote address. So now let's make a little function on getting the IP address. So I'll do define get IP, take in a request. So we'll, pa we'll actually pass the entire request through it because I'm gonna separate it from home just so we can possibly use this again in the future if we need to. And first thing I'll do is try and what we're gonna try is getting the X forwarded IP right here. So I'll set that equal to X forwarded equals to that. All right, so if that exists, so if X forward, then the IP equals to X forward split comma zero. Okay, so if you actually can see the X forward, this is how it'll split it up into two parts where it'll just show the, it'll just grab the IP address that we need. Else, 
ip equals to request dot meta dot git remote address or remote idd or addr and then we do an accept clause and we say ip equals to an empty string and then we return ip so that's a simple little function to basically parse the data uh, from the request to get the IP address. So if this exists, it's gonna go for it. If it doesn't, it's just gonna be using the remote address. Uh, this is kind of like a catch-all, if you will, versus just using this. Like we could just use try and use this, but again, depending on how your server's set up, that might not work. Um, so let's actually go ahead and get rid of that. All right, so now that we have this, uh, this will be more clear once we actually get it live and working so we can actually see uh, the address is coming through, which is something that we will do. And um, so now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and grab this get IP and in my form. All right, so now what I wanna do is actually change this form a little bit uh, so it actually does uh, what we want it to do using model form instead of this. Because uh, we don't really want get or create for the email. We would just want to create the email one time. And we also want to set the IP address one time as well. Uh, what this is doing is okay, but it, it may, it's not going to really show us errors that a lot of forms do by default. Um, so let's actually just comment this stuff out. And we'll add new join.save again. And then I'm going to add new join.ip address equals to get IP of the request. All right, so that's that. All right, so now that we have that, so let's actually go ahead and try it out. We still have to edit some stuff in the form, so this is not failing, like we want only one email address, we don't want it to change every time. Uh, so we go in here and we'll do a little refresh, and then I'll do coding for entrepreneurs, and I'll do, well, maybe I'll just make up something, entrepreneurs, re -entrepreneurs entrepreneurs to hit join all right nothing looks like it happened so let's go into the admin look at joins and we click on this one and it shows that it actually did save that IP cool uh, well that's obviously not the IP because it's my local address uh, and again it's about how your server is set up so in this case our server is set up not to actually grab the IP where this will actually grab it uh, when we bring it live Okay, so uh, now that we have that out of the way, we need to change something in our models, which is email. We need this to be true, uh, unique. So unique equals to true. Now, what do we do? Okay, so I made a change in my model. Let's actually look at the guide. And if we scroll down, so we already have it installed. We already have it synced. If we scroll down a little bit, um, we see making changes to model. So, um, what we're doing here is once we make the changes to the model, then we would run this migration. So we could run this specifically. So we would close this out and run python manage.py schema migration. And it's gonna be joins auto, because that's the name of our app. Press enter, python manage.py migrate joins. All right, cool. So now it added this unique email of join email. So if we go back into our sign up, run the server. Let's, let's actually make sure we're grabbing that right email. So joins, I'm gonna copy this email here, go to our homepage, click on that email, hit join, and it's gonna say join with this email already exists. Okay, so that is how we'll leave it. We'll leave it with that error. Uh, Swift for Entrepreneurs, on the other hand, does not do that. It actually redirects you. So if we go in here and type out our email and hit join, this actually redirects them to that public page. So at some point we might wanna do that too. Uh, so that's why I will leave the view, I'll leave these commented out because we might actually want to jump that direction because if it already exists, it should, maybe it should just redirect them uh, to the other page. So um, I'll leave it, but I'll actually even show you what we would do there is we would just comment these out, get these back up and go if created, we're gonna do uh, new join old dot IP address 
equals to get IP of the request and then new join dot old save. So that's how we would just adapt that to then after after all that we'll just do redirect here. So let's leave it at that. But I want to show you how to do it with the model form too because we still want that unique clause and having that little error come up like that is pretty good and it might be useful for you in other parts of your projects or whatever you're working on. Showing an error is important. Okay, so the next thing is this IP address field. We don't want that and we don't need it. So now we can actually just say what fields we want in here and you can just have a list and all I'm gonna do is email because that's the only field I actually want. So in my models, I would hard write every field that I'd want, okay? So that's what you'd use fields for. Put a comment at the end, do a, just refresh the page here and now all I see is email. Um, so there is another way to write this, but it's best practice to actually write out the fields you want, but you can also write out exclude and then write a fields that you want to exclude. But it is better practice to write out the fields you want to include. So whoever's working with your project, they'd be able to make see what fields that you already have in there and make changes or adapt it as needed. And especially seeing something like email as a field versus exclude IP address, that's not a whole lot for us, right? It, it, saying what fields included actually tells us a little bit more about that form, where saying what's excluded doesn't really tell us anything about that form. Cool, so there's that. Uh, we just saved the email, right? We saved the email, we saved the IP address, we got the IP address, so we are pretty much ready to go as far as the IP is concerned. Uh, so now what we need to do is we need to create a unique code for, for that email. Now, of course, the email itself is unique, but we want to have a code that's unique as well. Uh, so like in here, we have something like this. But if you notice, this reference right here is the same as this. So their public page, this is the same as the reference page. Uh, so you could actually go to their public page and see this and see like how they're doing essentially. And then you could also just go to the reference as well. Uh, so if a friend of yours is really popular or you see a campaign like this and they're really popular, you might try that because that actually might work and show you what their stats are. Uh, another way, of course, for us will be going to coding for or typing in an email on Swift for Entrepreneurs, and then it will take us there too. So that's another way. So if you know your friend's email, you could even try that. But we want to try and figure out a way so we can't, so we can block spam from multiple IP addresses doing the same thing. Okay, so that's it. That's grabbing the IPs. Uh, we will return to this topic and we will go into more depth with it because there is something else that we need to do is actually monitor how these IP addresses work. All right, we will see you in the next one.